Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan special. I hope you're having a very, very blessed Ramadan and inshallah you're not eating too much. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. How are you? How's your fast going? Alhamdulillah. Ahsan, Ahsan. Uh, Sheikh, we've, we've been discussing fasting, we've been discussing the meal of fasting and how to fast. Certain people are actually exempted from fasting, aren't they? And can we go through a couple of examples of who does not have to fast in the month of Ramadan? A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad There are certain individuals that fasting is not wajib and obligatory on them um, One of them is the one in which fasting is very difficult uh, due to being in the old age, the elderly ones, for example, those who are, let's say, in their 80s, 90s, 70s sometimes, they can't fast, they have to eat something during the day, in the morning, they have to have breakfast, they can't uh, fast uh, a whole day, then they're exempted from fasting. Um, other individuals, um, for example, the pregnant woman, the one who's expecting baby, for example, um, and they call it al-muqrib, the one who is expecting nearly. So, um, the one who is expecting to have the child. Okay, so we were, I think in English we're heavily pregnant or coming towards exactly, the end exactly. of the nine months. Exactly. The delivery date is very exactly, close by. Exactly. But even if if that woman who is pregnant in her first months, mm -hmm. and she cannot fast, she finds a difficulty uh, in fasting, or it would be a danger for her fetus mm -hmm. to remain alive and to okay. remain in her womb, then she has to break her fast. And also the woman who is giving uh, breast milk okay. uh, to the baby who was born, and um, that might harm the baby or... Okay, okay. so when she she needs she's the baby needs feeding. Exactly. Is, but she's also exempted. Exempted from fasting on that day. And of course, uh, the issue of traveling, if you travel um, outside your uh, hometown and uh, you go away um, more than 22 kilometers okay. going and coming, so roughly 45 kilometers, you go, let's say you go from London to Luton and you come back. Yes. So in Luton, you can break your fast, for example. Okay. It's more than 22 kilometers. Is that the same amount of distance for uh, Qasr? Salah? Exactly the same. Whenever, okay. it, whenever you see, this is the rule. Whenever you break, uh, whenever you do the qasr salah, yes, then you break your fast. Okay. That's the rule. Okay, whenever okay. there's a qasr, you break your fast. Okay. There's the attachment between mm -hmm. the qasr salah, shortening of your salah, and shortening of the and fast, basically, and fast uh, breaking your fast. Okay, breaking the fast. Exactly. And what about those who are ill and 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 sick for? Example, those who are diabetic, who need to inject themselves. Ex exactly, they are they're also exempt from fasting. Okay. Those who cannot bear fasting for the whole day, they need injection, they need to swallow tablets, for example, and um, specific medication. They have to follow the certain hours during the day. Those who are sick, ill, uh, in a specific ailment, then they're exempt as well. But as I've said, um, it has to be, um, as previously said, it has to be a severe condition. So okay. it's not just, well, I have a cold or a fever, then I, I'll just break my fast. Or oh. it's just an illness that won't harm me that much. It depends on, let's say, the, the level of, of diabetes. Okay, the One, two, I don't know. Uh, the the levels, severity How extreme it is. Yeah. Um, can you actually fast without any issue? Fine. If the doc mm. doctor says, you can fast, that's fine. There's no issue with it. Okay, so you must. And you think that you can fast? Then go for it. Mm. Then go for it. But if it's harming you, then خلاص. Okay. So it depends on the condition. And if you are exempted from fasting, um, is there a qadha or a kafara or is there an alternative? Or are you just totally exempt? You don't have to fast and you don't have to worry about anything else. Carry on. 
Well, there's two scenarios here. Number one, if um, the, fa the, the condition, let's say the woman uh, uh, stops feeding uh, the baby her milk uh, and uh, she didn't fast the whole month of Ramadan in this year. So for the next upcoming year and before the next Ramadan, if she stopped giving the baby uh, the breast milk, then she must do the qada. Okay. But if she continued the breastfeeding till the next Ramadan, then there's no more qada. Mm -hmm. she, so she enters the second Ramadan and is still giving uh, the breast no, milk to the, it's the it's baby. Two, no, sometimes two years to, to she feed. She'll be exempted even the qada. There's no okay. qada anymore no qada. for the first of Ramadan, uh, okay. the, the first year of Ramadan. In okay. this case. So the, the qada only lasts for from one Ramadan to another Ramadan? Yeah, for, the, for, 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 for the, such cases. For such cases. If the illness continues, let's say somebody okay. has if continuous it, if illness. It, if they can't repay the qada in that one year, then it's, it's, it's dropped. You don't have to worry about it. Exactly, yes. Exactly. Okay. Sheikhna, if someone is exempted from fasting, is there something else that they can do instead of fasting? Or is it... Okay, I'm not fasting, don't have to worry about anything, that's it. Or is there some sort of alternative substitute that they can do? That, okay, you're not fasting, maybe you can you know, give some money to the poor or something? Well, initially, for those who, let's say, they are ill or they have critical conditions, they can't fast. Um, in this case, they can give what is called as the mood. Okay. So the, the fidya of not fasting that day due to illness, for example, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and so forth, they have to give uh, one mood for per day okay. that they did not fast. And mood is, for those who don't know, mood is actually a weight, isn't it? A weight. It, was, it was a measuring exactly. unit. Exactly. Um, it's roughly how much today? 750 grams. 750 grams. Exactly, okay, okay. Yes. 750 grams. So they give uh, 750 grams per day that they didn't fast. Okay. So let's say if the pregnant woman didn't fast for the whole month and it was only 29 days, they give uh, 750 yeah. grams mm -hmm. per day for the rest of 29 days. Okay. Uh, and that's given to the poor as a food. So you have to buy food. 750 wheat. grams, yes, yeah, so I was going to ask you, 750 grams of what? Yeah, exactly. So it's like wheat, barley, and so forth. Okay, you so grains. Grains, exactly. Flour, yeah. You buy them food um, uh, because you can't just give cash away and, and walk away. You have to make sure they, they buy with it um, okay. food such can, as the can, wheat. Can I give other things? Can I give milk? Can I give meat? Like what is mentioned in the mas'ala is wheat, barley, and uh, dates, dates raisins. raisins, and so forth. Mm -hmm. These are the main ones okay. which are mentioned in the mas'ala. And that's given, as I've said, to the poor person. So this is the first scenario. For those who will do the qada later on, so okay. let's say um, the one who was breastfeeding, now she's finished, uh, she stopped giving uh, the baby the milk anymore and uh, she wants to do the qada so, so she just gives one uh, mood per day okay. and that's it but let's say the case of not being able to fast continues mm -hmm. till the next and the second Ramadan, yes. the month of Ramadan of the next year which means she can't do the qada of the current Year of Ramadan. Yes, the, what, what is outstanding, she can't uh, repay that by the next Ramadan. Exactly. In this case, she has to pay the, the first mod, okay. which is the 750 grams yes. per day. On top of that, she has to pay another mod, extra mod, for not being able to fast that uh, oh, really? of mm -hmm. that year, okay, so of that day. Oh, okay. Is this still considered fadiyah or is this some sort of penalty like a kafara? You see, there's a difference between fidya and kafara. Okay. Kafara is when somebody deliberately breaks his fast. He oh. eats or drinks. 
So that, that's a penalty. That's a penalty that okay. he has to, for example, uh, fast 60 continuous days yes. or give um, uh, to 64 food, for example, okay. and so forth. So that's the kafara of those who intentionally break their fast. Okay, so that's a penalty. That's a penalty. That's kafara it's called. Fidya is to do with those who can't fast. Okay, due so to a is this something like compensation towards possibly, Ramadan? Yeah. You, you can say that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's an alternative or a substitute. Exactly, exactly. So, and you were saying the lady uh, breastfeeding, exactly. it's been one year, she couldn't repay what was outstanding, she couldn't do the qada, exactly. So, she has to give the mud for what she's missed, yes, and an extra mud on top per day, yes. So that's two mud a day. Wow. That's 1.5 kilograms a day yes. of wheat, barley, and so forth to give it to the poor person uh, because she, she, she wouldn't be able to do the qada of that mm -hmm. year, of yes. month of Ramadan. And she's now entering the second year of Ramadan, month mm -hmm. of Ramadan, and she's still breastfeeding, for example. Okay. Or she's having the second pregnancy, for example, and so forth. In this case, uh, they have to pay two mud to um, fulfill this requirement. The fidya, is this wajib or is it mustahab or is it to stop you doing the qada? No, it's wajib. It's wajib because, because you're not fasting. Exactly. You have to do it. No, it's not that you're not fasting. You're exempt. Because you're exempt from fasting, exactly. you have to pay the fidya. Exactly. You have to do the alternative or the substitute. And because you, you couldn't do the qada as well, during and that year, okay. then you pay there's the second There's an extra one exactly. you have to do So there's one for missing it in Ramadan And there's one for not being able to pay the qada Exactly Okay So, Shaykhna, if I'm exempted from uh, fasting For example, I'm ill or something like that um, uh, do, And I paid the fidya Does that exempt me from the qada? Or do I have to pay I have to give the fidya and do the qada as well? Well, in this case, let's say that uh, if you were ill for 10 days during the month of Ramadan and then you became ill afterwards and you continued your fasting for the rest of the month of Ramadan after this holy month, um, initially you have to do the qada of that 10 days and also pay the fidya for every day that you couldn't fast due to the illness so you, you pay the fidya, the 750 grams Per day of the illness and also you have to do the qada. Okay, so you have to pay the fidya, fidya because uh, you were exempted. And now that you are capable of doing the fast, you do the qada as well. Is there a time limit on the qada and also on the fidya? Is there, do I have to do it straight away? As in, the day I didn't fast is the day I have to go and give fidya? Or is there a time limit that for this amount of time you have? To give something to the poor Well with regard to the f uh, fasting the qada You must make sure that you, you uh, do the qada Before the end of the month of Sha'ban Before the next forthcoming month of Ramadan Of the next year That's important So you have 11 months From the first month of Ramadan To the next one To do the qada So you have to make sure that It's wajib that you do the qada within this limit so from the day after Eid al-Fitr Exactly All the way till the end of Sha'ban Exactly Between you have to repay your qadha Exactly Asan Shaykhna So basically the exemptions are Pregnant women Those who are travelling Those who are ill Is there any other ones? Um, those who are reaching the age of Okay, uh, old age And it's difficult and for them Difficult for them to, to fast Because of exactly. long hours and things like that The mother that. who breastfeeds her baby For okay. example and it's harming the baby if, he, if she does do the, the fasting Okay So she's exempted as well Ascent. And then if you are exempted you have a fidya to pay And when you are capable you should repay the fast Exactly Before the next Ramadan you pay If the you can't the qada. you have a double fidya to pay If you don't do the qada And the next month Ramadan yes. uh, comes Then you have to pay two, two fidya Ascent. Not being able to do the qada and for not fasting, fasting that day Ramadan. And thank you very much to all our viewers for joining us on this episode Inshallah, you are not exempted from your fast 
and that you are capable and healthy enough to complete all of them insha'Allah. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Yeah.